students, my name is Melody Munch. Welcome to my second grade classroom. This tour was filmed in March, so you're going to see what a lived-in classroom looks like. I wanted to create a classroom that was cozy, peaceful, and functional, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. All of the decor was made by me, and I will link it in the description along with as many classroom items as possible. In the hallway outside the room, I have this welcome to second grade sign that matches my decor, along with a phone board that I use to display student work on clipboards. And now let's head into the room. Let's start here with the flexible seating choice chart. Every day when students have independent work time in our classroom, they can come over and take their magnet and pick a spot to sit at for independent work time. So once the spot has been filled, that spot is gone for the day. And our rule is that whatever flex you pick, you stay there for the day unless someone is really distracting you or you keep talking to a friend and you need to pick a different spot. Sometimes I do allow them to switch. But typically where you're at is where you stay for that day because it's gonna change the next day anyways. I do call students in different orders to pick and we have a rule that whatever flex you sat at yesterday, you just can't sit there the two days in a row. So you have to keep switching up your choice. That way the choices are not always getting taken by the same people and different students get to sit there. And really it's worked pretty well because of the amount of options versus the amount of students that I have, it works pretty well. I got this auto drip pan from another teacher, but I hear they sell them at auto stores. And my husband even cut it a little bit because it was quite large. So we cut it, we cut the edges and put border on them and it's been the perfect fit so that it can be magnetic. We also have our trash can provided by the school here in this corner. Looking at the other side of this, a standing cart came with this classroom and is one of my favorite pieces to have. I keep all of our big construction paper up here along with like some puzzles the students can do on this table at different times of the year. Not everyone's into puzzles, but some are. And then any other manipulatives, extra folders, and even some anchor charts are kept in here. So that has been very useful. In the bottom, I have a ton of books that were already in this classroom. And I typically don't use level books because I like to use decodables unless they are higher readers reading for comprehension. So I can't get rid of those because they're bought with title funds, but... They typically just stay in there unless I think of something applicable to use them for. This is also where students turn in their work. So if they have homework, we do one piece of homework that's due every Friday. So that goes in the homework bin. And then any other work like a spelling test or math test would go in here. This works for me because we typically don't do a test very often and their other work I'm checking as they complete it and they put it in their mailbox way over there. So that's why this works. I used to have students turn in work for all the different subjects so I would have a bin for each subject. But since I don't really do that anymore, this is what I do instead. At the end of the cart, we have our bathroom passes. Students just put the big bottle of hand sanitizer on their desk. They do have to give me the restroom signal and wait for my approval because sometimes they're asking to go at not a good time and I just like to know who's out of the room. So I do have the mask. I know other teachers don't like having students ask, so they just have them put the mask on their desk and then if the pass is on somebody's desk, they have to wait till it's returned. And when it's returned, then the next person could go. I definitely would recommend only letting one student at a time just so that there's not socialization in the bathroom parties, but I still have them ask because I just prefer to know when they're leaving the room. I also have our Clorox wipes, the water for our plant. So that's why it has plants all over it. And then there's some other miscellaneous things like extra tissues and so on. The cubes that I use, these stackable cubes are from Walmart and I've had them since my first year of teaching. They've been used for many different purposes and I've loved having them. So definitely recommend having a few of those as makeshift storage. Now over here, I do have a word wall and I would recommend changing this out to a sound wall instead. That is one of my projects on my list is to add a sound wall because 
what we know about the science of reading shows that it's much more valuable for the students. I do still like having this just because students can refer to it during their writing time, but it's not near as useful as a sound wall. So if you are trying to decide what to do, I would encourage you to do that instead and I would replace this word wall because it does take up a lot of space with something that is going to be utilized and is more useful for students. The word wall is also on a big foam board. We got all the foam boards that I'm using from our church. Our church does a lot of signage for big events and when they're done with the events they typically just discard the signage or store it in case they want to use it again and this event was no longer happening so they gave us these big foam boards and my husband cut them to size because this one was actually a little bit too tall. I have a really low ceilings in here. So we cut it to size and made it work. That way, even when I transferred schools, I could just bring this whole big piece and didn't have to redo it. On my cabinets, I have our writing process, which I absolutely love having the students go through. It's perfect in second grade. We're really starting to understand that process. And then um, the quote of the month has not been very utilized by me this year. I think we've changed it twice, but I used to get really into to changing out the quote every month and we do a writing about it. Sometimes as you go through years of teaching, things become important in different ways and doing our other writing has just become more of the thing we needed to focus on. But if I have another quote that I like, like there's one at the end of the year I always use that's from Winnie the Pooh, so I'll probably change it then, but it hasn't got a lot of changes this year. It's pretty much been like that since, I don't know, maybe November. Moving on to these surf desks. This was a piece of flexible seating that a kindergarten teacher in my building had and she was not planning to use them. So they have worked really well for second grade. I think they'd be great for even third grade as well. And they just sit here and then they can put their work on the flat part. They absolutely love it. It's just if they have a computer and they like try and get up really quick, I'm like, take your computer with you because otherwise, it just falls on the floor and that is no good. When using technology, <laughs> I believe these were bought with like a school fundraiser program because they might be kind of expensive, I think. So you'll have to look into that, but our PTA does a fundraiser every year and however much is raised, they let the teachers use that based on how many things were sold in their classroom. So that is how we got those. This white cart was another thing that a teacher was getting rid of and it was also bought with school funds so it has to stay in the school and I just put some random extra time options in this area. We have some drawing books and some I Spy or Where's Waldo type books and then I put some other curriculum things that we're using on the side for me to pull from as needed and some other student supplies related things on the bottom there. Over here is our easel. This is from Ikea and I've had it since maybe my third year of teaching. It also has a whiteboard on the back that you may have noticed and even has some room for chart paper. So I've loved having this. I think it was only around $30 too. So very worth it. I keep my Mr. Sketch markers up here for when needed and a whiteboard eraser. So in my room, I've got a whiteboard here and here and that's it. In the middle here is a smart board. So you can't use whiteboard markers on that, but that's okay. We make it work. And this is our voice level chart. This is primarily used at the beginning of the year and then occasionally throughout the year. We just talk about how level zero is like absolutely no voice or noise so that everyone can focus. Level two, or sorry, level one is like a whisper voice, so talking quietly. Two is normal, and three is only for when we are presenting something. If you are the presenter, you use a strong speaker voice. So love those. The lights are from Walmart, and I have them on that chalkboard surface with like a Velcro backing. You've also probably noticed the cute little student faces popping up all over the room. Any student that I'm showing you has been approved to be shown on video by their families. So just so you know, it's good to go. But also this is a tradition I just love doing because the students love having their photo. They just get such a kick out of it and seeing what they hold. And it just really makes the classroom feel more like ours, not just mine. It's really something we share together, so I love including them 
all around it. Under the chalkboard area, we have some lap desks that are from Target. I think they were five or maybe seven dollars each, and I've had them for years. They are not the most popular in my classroom for some reason. I know other classes who have like a class set because they just love them, but for me, two has been fine. On the whiteboard here, I love these magnetic spice racks. Had those for years and years to hold all the books. Also loving these dry erase board erasers <laughs> that are just magnetic towels from Amazon. Love those and I keep all of my whiteboard dry erase markers in here. I primarily use them for our classroom management system that I'll have to explain in another video and I write our magic word of the day right here. I'll also have to explain that <laughs> at another time. This chair was a great Facebook marketplace find that I have had for maybe two or three years. And this cart was from Ikea. It has been three different colors, I think. It was originally teal blue, then painted red when I had a camping theme, and now it's white. So I don't think we'll be painting it again, but it has been well worth the investment. I keep so many miscellaneous things in here, like our microphone that we use when students are presenting or we're doing different greetings, classroom timer, the bell that is an occasional way I call attention. Gotta have a cup holder for the coffee and all kinds of other classroom related tools are in the cart. Now to the stage. This is something my husband built. It was a very popular thing to have a stage around my third year of teaching. So he built it for the classroom out of pallet wood. We have a whole video explaining of him explaining how he did that. So I will link that in the description. The students absolutely love sitting on the stage. It's a very popular flex. They love putting their work here on top of it and sitting on the rug to do their work. They also love standing there whenever they are giving a presentation, like when we're doing our publish parties. And I also stand or sit there quite a bit when I'm either reading a book or teaching. It's just a very, a very well-loved space. We also use it for our morning songs. When I stand there in this room, I feel like I'm gonna hit the projector. So I haven't been standing there as much. I usually stand on the ground whenever we're doing our class song, just because I feel like I'm gonna hit the ceiling. But at my past school where the ceilings were a lot taller, I stood there more often. I've also been keeping a few miscellaneous things underneath the stage this year like tissue paper for different gifts that I might give out throughout the year but it's kind of a pain to get under there so not something that I do a whole lot but if I was to have my husband build another stage I would definitely have him build the top part where it could like open with a hinge that would be amazing so as I mentioned my students have flexible seating spots they can go to during independent times but other times they are often at what we call home base which is just their desk spot and that does switch up throughout the year so some students are at regular sized desks with chairs and others are at lower desks some of the lower desks have exercise or stability balls these have lasted really well. I've only had them this year, but I have really loved having a few of those. And as long as they understand not to bounce on them too aggressively or to hit the sides because I really despise that sound. <laughs> as long as they sit there appropriately, it has worked out really, really well. Prior to the balls, I just had pillows, which also work well. One of my students prefers or just sits better with the pillow, so he usually kneels on his knees on the pillow to do his work from the lower desk. On the other side here, we have wobble seats, and these are pricey. So I got these with that same school fundraiser money I mentioned before that got me those other surf desks from a different teacher. This is what I bought with my fundraiser money because I had about $600 and each of these was about 60. So I got these and a couple other small things. And that was it because I knew my students would love them, but I just could not bring myself to spend that much out of my own pocket. It's just so expensive. So I would definitely save something like that for a grant or if your school does a fundraiser and you can use fundraiser money you could do that. The classroom rug I've had, this is my third year with it. It's from Amazon. 
I've had other rugs from Marketplace or garage sales or even like the rug that's over there gifted to me from my mother-in-law that wasn't using it anymore. But I've really loved this one. It's an eight by 10. And I got it on a really good deal during the summer. It was like a prime day type of deal. I believe it was only like $58. <laughs> so I have not seen it go that low again. I have seen it around the $85, $90 price point. So I will link that and you could watch out for that deal. Up here, we've got our calendar. That is something I made and just printed and pieced together onto a poster board. And then I laminated it to make it stay really well. And the lights around my smart board and under the stage are just some LED strip lights. They add so much and I love that you can change out the colors. So here's the different colors I could change it to. I pretty much leave it green or white unless we're doing a fun day. Then sometimes I'll adjust the color to fit with the theme. Our schedule wall and what we're learning topics are just something I printed. And I have a student helper who comes and changes out which special we're gonna do for the day and puts it in that spot <laughs> since we have specials last this year. I also have extra spelling lists up there because students are always needing an additional one. I've got some scoop rockers that I think were $5 each from Big Lots at the time. And then I've got some more crate seats that have been through many different purposes, but we turned these into seats using some plywood and some pillow type foam and then covering them with some fabric. And I think we hot glued or, oh yeah, see they've been different colors for the different themes. I think I hot glued this white one and originally we had stapled it or maybe hot glued it, oh, it feels hot glued. So as you can see, <laughs> lots of extra hand sanitizer now, which is funny because that used to be hard to find. There we go, that one's finally coming up. This pillow was from Ikea. I don't know if they sell it anymore. More tissues because I only have that one cabinet in this room, so we've got to maximize all the storage possible. Above the board, you'll notice the forest trees that I showed you in the hallway that were originally supposed to go here, but as you can see, that space is much, much smaller. It says, in this class, we are family, and I had laminated that, so it kind of shows up in the glare, but I still really love how it looks and I love how it's kind of the centerpiece of the classroom. Over here is a nook I absolutely love. This bistro table was found at a garage sale and the stools were found on Facebook Marketplace and my husband did have to cut them down because they were a bit too tall. But we love, love, love this space as a class. It's a very, very popular flexible seating spot. And I love that we got the table for like $10. It was a very bright aqua blue and we spray painted it to be the white. On the wall, you guessed it, another foam board. This one I just covered with fabric and we use it as our class family promise area. We draft a promise at the beginning of each year after we talk about some character traits that we want our class to embody. The students submit ideas for the promise and then I compile it to reflect the ideas that they gave me. I absolutely love this tapestry from Amazon. I love how much space it takes up and it was only around $15. I've had different ones throughout the years and they really have them for everything you can think of. So that is a great way to fill space. And the wood is, the wood wall is paper. It's a paper wood wall. I did command strips to make it stay and it has held up really well. This is the third year with it in this classroom. I wanted to have some kind of focal wall and I love how it turned out. This is where students sharpen their pencils. In our classroom, we do a great pencil challenge. So only me or our designated student with the pencil sharpening job can do the sharpening. And typically they just put their pencils in the dull bin at the end of the day if they want them sharpened. The pencil, pencil sharpener will sharpen them and put them back. So there's not really a lot of sharpening during the day unless the tip just completely breaks. We keep extra expos and pencil top erasers, which looks like I might need some more in this area too. I have students keep water bottles over here just because I don't like extra things to be on the desk and sometimes they spill and get in the way. So we just keep them over here, but they can get a drink when they would like. And then we've got all our wonderful Chromebooks. In this cabinet, I keep lots of different resources for the students, like different learning games that we use, especially in math. And we have some recess games on this side. 
I have since taken a lot of our recess games and put them in these plastic reusable bags, which has been a great space saving tip and has really helped just everything stay more organized because those boxes were kind of ripping and falling apart. Here we've got the plant and one of our three calm down corners. I'll have to make another video about this space too, but I have really beefed these spaces up in the past couple years and they have been a great resource for my students. And then we've got our lovely plant since we just have the one window, it has to be here. And I love the life it brings to the room. The nugget couch is a expensive item to have in the classroom. Luckily for me, I did not have to pay for mine. I had reached out to them back when I was starting my Instagram and had asked if I could use one of their new colors in my classroom because it just fit perfectly. It was their Broadway red. And I have since changed to the gray cover as it matches this classroom theme much better. But that is how I got my nugget. Otherwise, I would have just started saving for it because I really felt like it would be a great item to have in the classroom. Something really inexpensive that I just absolutely love are gel clings. I love changing them out each month. So I've got the St. Patrick ones up right now because they're just so cute. And then I've got a little curtain that was like $10 from Marshalls and a little tassel banner. Now to our stem bin wall. There's also some other student materials mixed into these cubbies. The cubbies were a part of the classroom when I got here. So they were just a perfect space to put all of our stem bin tubs that I got the tub part from Target and some of the other tubs from Dollar Tree. I also love that this is our happy place decor right above it. I just love the centerpiece that gives to our classroom, even though it's not technically a bulletin board, it just serves as a really good space to put something like that. And the stem bins could be a whole video in themselves. So if you're interested in that, you'll have to let me know, but I've got all kinds of different things, some supplies that I've had for years, some things that were just in the classroom and some things that I have ordered so there's a whole mix of things over here but they are used every morning as a morning choice and the students love them in this area we have our birthday display wall and our mindset mirror that also doubles as another calm corner i love being able to display both to display both of these things and i think they look really aesthetically pleasing but they are still functional we've also got our mailboxes this was one of the most expensive first purchases for my first year I believe this was like $40 it came in royal blue and my dad helped me spray paint that white so had a lot of help as you can hear throughout the years in my classroom and here are some cubbies that came with the classroom but I did not love that they were really brightly colored didn't really go with the neutral green theme I've got going on so I covered it with this burlap and just some little hooks and we don't really get into them that often. They store some math manipulatives. Then we've got my teacher desk area. These stools were gifted to me from a parent. She saw them on my classroom wish list. And I made the tassel banner with the help of a friend's mom who loves to sew during my first year of teaching. It has also changed. It's had a couple different colors on it, but I love the colors it has now. Back here is probably one of the most unsightly areas of my classroom which is under the desk. I keep my school phone and lots of reading group supplies hidden under there. This chair I bought from Amazon. I loved upgrading that with some points that we had. And then I got this free little storage filing cabinet that was being discarded. Same with this storage. I use that for a lot of student supplies. I also keep my little laminator under there. And as you can see, lots of extra pencils and more reading group supplies and expos, all the things. Both of these storage things were also being discarded. If you're a first year teacher, especially go early in the summer when teachers are first getting into their rooms because they're often getting rid of things they no longer use and you can take some paper and make it look cute again and give it new life. And all three of these things, actually, this too is being discarded and I snagged it and put it to use. I do really love having this teacher toolkit, as many people call it. It just has all the things that I'm referring to often and keeps them easy to access and looking cute. We got this boxwood from Home Depot and it comes in four panels that you can connect with zip ties. And then I hung it with 
clear Haman cooks and it has not fallen. So I've been very impressed with the durability. And then these baskets were found at different thrift stores and Target. This rolling cart was purchased from Michaels and I have just put cute little labels to display different papers and things I keep in there. And most of the decor was purchased at Hobby Lobby, including this cute little pen holder that was in the plant section. Over here, we've got the tent. My husband helped me make that from a Pinterest guide. That was free, so you could Pinterest that. Love the little rug from Amazon underneath it. And we've got our classroom job chart over here as well. And then we go into the library. The picnic table was from Sam's Club. It is a kid size, and I believe it's supposed to be used as a sandbox. This lives up and I just have extra folders and things in there right now, but we've loved having it. I wouldn't think it would be a very good fit for third grade and up though. It's like just on the verge for my second graders where they're not too, too big, but some of them are a little big where it's like not quite comfortable. So probably second grade and lower, that would be good for. This massive shelf was already in the classroom and is so heavy we could not get rid of it. So I put all the student book bins and then some different library bins in here. This shelf was something we purchased from Facebook Marketplace and I've got all these bins from the Dollar Tree that I use as our classroom library book bins. I have another video coming soon with more details on the classroom library, so stay tuned for that. This massive piece of wood was actually a backdrop used in our wedding. We didn't really know what to do with it and I didn't have the heart to give it away to anyone. So we just put it to good use in the classroom and we added these starry lights when I had a camping theme, but I just love them so much I haven't got rid of them. They were from Amazon. Wrapping up in our last little corner here, we've got another library nook with an Ikea chair that I got in my first year of teaching. A rug that was passed down to me some poofs from Target that were on clearance and I bought them I think just last year. They haven't held up amazing but the students do love them. And this saucer chair was also bought in my first year of teaching and I've used it every single year. I've got my last calm corner over here with a little lamp from Target and I think other than these areas to display posters of things we've been talking about and what we're learning that is pretty much it. The decals that are triangles were in a pack on Amazon. I think we've covered the whole classroom. Hope you enjoyed this classroom tour and if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer them. Or if there's anything you'd like to know more about that I could make a future video about, let me know in the comments and I'd love to make that for you. Until next time, thanks for watching.